the gaze in uh, the act of drawing can adopt uh, a uh, holistic or a partial approach at the same time. The drawing can be synthetic and uh, analytical. From uh, the point of view of its uh, ability to synthesize, drawing manages to grasp and reveal the internal or intimate uh, structure of uh, reality. It is no coincidence that, uh, for example, despite the extreme evolution of uh, representative systems uh, through digital and uh, through the use of computers and the consequent uh, hypertrophy of the systems of representation and multiplication of images, still today many artists are called upon to draw by hand the anatomical tables of medical and scientific texts. This happens because the eye, in combination with the hand of the artist, which allows several slight variations in pressure of, on the support of the drawing, makes it uh, possible to underline, although in a very subtle way and sometimes not visible at first glance, some parts instead of others. We could say that uh, this is a characteristic of drawing brings us back to what I said previously, to a fundamental characteristic of the old drawing process, the analytical capability. Therefore, the draftsman has the possibility to define in uh, some directional vectors, as our name would say, the structure of a real entity. On the other hand, the draftsman thanks to his ability to provide uh, synthesis, can give a quick indication of the functioning of a machine or of the characteristics of the movement of an animal or of the kinetic peculiarities of a specific person caught in a specific situation or action. The act of drawing can become a sort of uh, partial investigation this is the case of a hyperrealistic drawing which exploits some characteristics of the drawing language and its primary components, its expressive atoms, such as the point and the line, and the capability of an obsessive reproduction of the smallest details. The definition of uh, hyperrealism is often used with uh, little competence or uh, certainly with the little uh, foresight, since uh, hyperrealism cannot be considered as a macro category in which to insert uh, any representation that is meticulous, well done, or that has a certain degree of virtuosity despite the great number of uh, handmade images which, uh, uh, even if they want to be figurative or realistic, present failings from a technical point of view. Hyperrealism cannot be considered a cauldron in which to insert anything, uh, a mass in which to insert anything, but hyperrealism must be considered in a much more defined way, an artistic movement with its own poetics, its own thought, also taking part in uh, that the general conceptual vocation of uh, contemporary expression, despite the proclamations of rejections of uh, pure conceptualism or of uh, some uh, references that you can find in uh, hyperrealism to the renovation of tradition. When a work is uh, simply well done, but uh, uh, if this work does not take part uh, in the poetics of hyperrealism, uh, it cannot be considered hyperrealistic, but uh, it must simply be defined as well done and realistic or uh, with a strong figurative vocation. Coming back to the main theme of this text, uh, that is uh, the linguistic difference between drawing and painting, the drawing has the possibility to change from the lightning fast synthesis to the slow and obsessive analysis of the details. Painting instead is always inevitably synthetic. Hyperrealist painting cannot be properly defined as painting, but uh, it should be better defined as a colored drawing or as a sort of extreme evolution of uh, pointillism that, uh, uh, starting from Seurat, 
and therefore from the so-called post-impressionist experience uh, can be found in some protagonists of the so-called hyperrealism. <laughs>